Hi everyone, today I want to talk about why pre-oxygenation is such an important concept prior to the induction of anesthesia and how your FRC affects your period of apnea prior to desaturation in the average adult. So we have to know the alveolar gas equation and the normal O2 consumption for average individuals. And you can see I have them listed here. Now, we also have to know that the average FRC is 3 liters. And then we can begin to look at this concept. Now, when we're breathing room air, the alveolar partial pressure of oxygen is going to equal 0.21, right? The FiO2 of room air is 21% times your atmospheric pressure minus the water vapor pressure which is 47 millimeters of mercury minus your average CO2 which is 40 over your average respiratory quotient which is 0.8 now, what will this equal? Well, this is going to equal 0 0.21 times 713 minus 50, because 40 divided by 0 0.8 is 50. Now, this is going to equal roughly 150 minus 50, right? So, our PaO2 in our alveolus is 100 when we're breathing room air. Now what is that percent of oxygen? Well, all we have to do is take the oxygen tension divided by atmospheric pressure, and that's going to give us roughly 13%. All right, now how long will it take till you desaturate if you are apneic, breathing just room air? Okay. So, 13% of our FRC is oxygen, then 3 liters times 0.13 will give us the amount of oxygen we have in our FRC, and that's roughly going to be 390 mLs. Now, if we take 390 and we divide that by our oxygen consumption, we're going to see that in roughly 1.56 minutes, this is mLs over mLs per minute, we will begin to desaturate if we are apneic. So now we can see what happens when we're breathing room air. But what do we do for three to five minutes prior to the induction of anesthesia? Well, we attempt to change the oxygen in the FRC, the concentration. So let's assume that we've allowed the patient to breathe it for five minutes. What might that look like? What, how much oxygen might there be in the FRC now? So now we can do our alveolar gas equation, and we can assume that we have 100% oxygen. We have our atmospheric pressure minus our water vapor pressure in atmospheric pressure minus our average CO2 over 0.8, the respiratory quotient. Now this is going to equal 713 minus 50. And this is going to equal uh, 663. Right, so that's 663 millimeters of mercury oxygen tension in the alveolus. Now what percent of oxygen is now in the FRC? All we have to do is take our 663 divide it by our atmospheric pressure, because that's all we can have under one atmosphere, and that is going to give us our percentage. And so when we calculate that out, let's do this very quickly on my calculator. That's going to give us 87% oxygen, roughly. So what does that mean? That means 0.87 times 3 liters is going to give us our amount of oxygen in 
the alveolus after appropriate preoxygenation. So that's going to be 2.617 liters or 2,617 mLs of O2. Now, how long until we desaturate? Looking at this uh, average individual, well, let's take what we have after preoxygenation and divide that by our oxygen consumption. Getting a little messy here. Now, when we do this math, when we take 2,617 divided by 250, that gives us 10. 0.47 minutes. So now you can see how that greatly assists you if a patient is apneic for an extended period of time on the induction of anesthesia. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, email me at armygas at gmail.com. Thanks.